Texas Newsmaker Saturday starts now. Wow, what a week it's been. Thanks for joining us on Newsmaker Saturday. Record turnout in the midterm. It was a blockbuster turnout, and we have a lot of races still in flux. Why weren't the votes counted earlier? What's going on? What's the path forward? We're going to start the program tonight with someone who knows this whole system very well. She was a Maricopa County recorder for 30 years. She preceded Adrian Fontes in that job. Helen Purcell joins us right off the top. And later in the program, we'll talk about the state of all these races, what happened, what didn't happen on election night. Helen Purcell joining us by telephone. Helen, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. I'm glad to do it, John. Helen, let's start with <clears throat> the closeness of the Senate race. Uh, Superintendent of Public Instruction is hanging there as well. Is this unusual? Is this election unusual or is it just getting a lot more attention? I think it's getting a lot more attention because we have an open Senate seat. Um, it's not unusual. You're going to see something close. We saw leading up to the election that it was going to be close. Everybody said that. So this shouldn't surprise anyone. You also have, you know, we've had congressional races in the past that have been close, and we've had some Senate races that have been close. Do you think we're heading into a recount on the Senate race? Um, that's kind of hard to tell with the number of, of votes that are out there. And if we see the spread right now, if it stays somewhere in that ballpark, we won't be seeing a recap. You've been through that before. I mean, I, I recall 2002, the gubernatorial mm -hmm. race, uh, Matt Salmon and Janet Napolitano, her first run at governor that she eventually won. But that went down to the wire. It turned out in the end, 1,200 votes separated the two. Right. So the, you've been the, through this. The count this. is 200. Right. And you've been through this stuff before. Yes. Okay, so what is Adrian Fontes looking at right now? As he's running, uh, you know, the lion's share, some 61% come out of Maricopa County of the total state vote. What has he got to brace for? What's he got to do right now to make sure people have confidence in the process? Well, I think he's doing everything that he should be doing. Um, he's got people working, he said, Seven to ten, which is exactly what we did. You have uh, shifts going all day long so that you get that done because it's not just you take those ballots and you shove them th through a machine. They have to be signature checked and they have to be processed by citizen boards before they can be tabulated. Okay, now on the signature part of this, that seems yes. to be what's slowing it down because you've got to check the signature. We had 320,000. 320,000 late early ballots that arrived on election day. Is that anything you saw in your time there? That's a little bit uh, more than what we saw. We would see 150, 200,000. Does that, that jam up the system and make it really hard to get out a timely count? Not necessarily. You have all of those ballots will be sent through scanners. And when they're scanned, then that signature pops up immediately next to the signature on their original voter registration. And if that doesn't match, there's additional things that you can do. If they have voted an early ballot in the past, you can show all of those signatures. So you can come up with a number of signatures to match. And you can check them qu rather quickly. Rather quickly, yes. Okay, is anything here unusual in terms of the timeliness of how we're getting returns? I mean, on election night, we had over <laughs> half a million votes not counted. That's like a fourth right. of the vote in Arizona. I mean, I, I was sitting here thinking, wow, can we, is there a way to do this better? Well, you're always going to, if you have those people who are going to drop their ballots off on election day, that's always going to make it a little bit longer because you don't have those in the system and you've got to get those into the system. Okay, and I, I'm going to try. Maybe we Go ahead. Maybe we move out a little bit when you can start tabulating. Right now, you can't start tabulating until seven days before the election. Maybe you move that back a little bit and start earlier. Uh, you read my mind. And I was going to tread lightly here, but I, I've got to ask you this in all directness. Have we gotten to a point, you think, where in the effort to make it easier to vote, where, where it's just you know kind of a cakewalk now, you don't have to do a lot. You used to have to really commit and go to the polls. That I don't know how to put this. In the effort to make it easier, have we complicated the process? I don't think we have. What we have done, John, is make it easier for the voter because that's what they say they want. You know, everything today is instant gratification. 
So they, <laughs> That's right. They, they okay, want so everything when, now. When I'm sitting there on election night complaining that we're not getting numbers, that's just my own hang up. I mean, as long as the voter is satisfied, I've got to get over it. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> yeah, because that's what you're trying to do. This is all about the voter. Right. You're and right. You know, even though with um, the recorder having 61 percent of the of the ballots that are out, he's got 61 percent of the voter registration. That's how big Maricopa County is. It's 61 percent of the right. state. Okay, the, um, the chairman of the Republican Party on Friday, the uh. state Republican Party, Jonathan Lines, will put up that graphic. He, um, he essentially threw some gas in the fire. He sent, uh, he sent out a letter basically saying that he's worried about irregularities. We'll put up uh, Jonathan Lines' statement here if we've got it on the graphic. He really questioned kind of what's going on, and he said that they warned, here it is, the Arizona Republican Party objects in the strongest possible terms to the deliberate destruction of evidence by Maricopa County Recorder Adrian Fontes. He directed his office to mix the disputed ballots in with the undisputed ballots. Break that down for me. Is that a fair accusation? Now, I don't know what he's, what he's referring to as disputed ballots. If he's talking about ballots whose signatures don't match the signature on the voter registration, that is a questionable signature. And those can be checked with the voter. And we always did that up until 7 o'clock on Election Day, but not after that. Do you think he's So that's being, a process that he's doing that I did not do. Is this being helpful to come out with those, that kind of language? Um, you know, at this point, everybody's kind of their, their nerves are frayed. So everything that happens is going to be suspect to everyone. So okay. I'm not sure that he's he's just looking out for his party, as any party chairman would do. Okay, Helen, you were there 30 years. Um, take me inside the county recorder's office. There are people, there's chatter on social media. There are people doubting the integrity of the process. Here we go. Uh, they assume when you're in there and you're a Republican, you're helping out the Republicans. Now Adrian Fontes is in there. He's a Democrat, a former, former Bernie Sanders supporter. People are saying, is he, is he monkeying around with the numbers? This is the stuff people are asking. Do they we have, are not. Do they have we are any not a, reason a to be suspicious? We are not a member of a party. When you're in that office, uh, I don't know if it's changed. I have no way of knowing that, but I don't think so. I left some very good people there. When you're at that office, you walk in that door, you don't have a party. You serve all the voters. Are you sure about that? <laughs> well, that's what, the way we did it. Okay. I mean, people really wonder now in this hyperpartisan world we're in whether these recorders around the country, I mean, we're going through this in Florida, maybe even in Texas, uh -huh. they're wondering if the, if the vote is the voter, if people are messing around with it. Well, I would certainly hope not. The integrity of that office should still be in place or in any office across the country. I know things are done differently in other states and other jurisdictions. But okay. we always looked at it as we had to do, we had to be the in, integral one that did what the law allows you to do. And you can certainly do that. But beyond that, you can't. And there are always people from other parties in that room, in these county recorders, kind of check and balancing each other, right? Observers, yes. Always. Always. Helen, Always. thank you. I appreciate your time. Helen Purcell, former Maricopa County recorder, shedding some light on what may be coming down the line and whether you should have any concern about what's going on down there. Helen, thank you very much. We really appreciate it. Thanks, John. When we return on Newsmaker Saturday, two guys who have watched this stuff, uh, <laughs> well, we've got Chad Campbell, a uh, longtime politician here in Arizona. He was a, a a stalwart in the House of Representatives, a Democrat. Mike Noble, a pollster, OH Predictive Insights. We're going to look at how the polling went going into this and how accurate it was. And what we look forward to now, and we're going to review the races, how they shake out, and what may change. Back on Newsmaker Saturday in a minute. Back on Newsmaker Saturday with two guys who know a thing or two about elections. Uh, pollster Mike Noble, OH Predictive Insights. Uh, on the left of your screen and on the right of your screen, familiar face, Chad Campbell, former House Minority Leader. He's been around the block. He knows how this whole thing works. 
Let's do a macro view of the national election first. Chad, for a Democrat, how do you, how do you read it? Uh, good. Uh, again, I think what happened on Election Day was what Democrats wanted to happen. We took the House back at the federal level. Uh, the Senate had become a long shot at this point. You know, we, we had expected not to take the Senate back. But getting the win in Nevada and hopefully getting the win here in Arizona is a huge step for Democrats nationally. So it was a really good day for Dems. Mike, how did you read it? Nationally, the mood. nationally, I think one is that uh, voter participation for a typical midterm was uh, pretty good across the board. And what's driving that? Well, the partisanship? I, uh, I think it may be partisanship, but also I think there's just more energy in the air on both sides. But I think absolutely probably partisanship because I think we saw higher levels on the D in our side, but not so much on the independent side. Okay. And so it shows that it's probably due to more of the partisan politics of fueling it. But House, I think it kind of went as expected. The field was just too tough to overcome. Democrats fielded great candidates across the board, flush with cash, uh, just too many seats to defend for the GOP. But on the Senate side, frankly, the Democrats would have done better. It's just the map was so uh, uh, di uh, bad for them, frankly, because uh, they had a lot of seats to defend and Republicans that had very yeah, a lot few. Of, exactly. A lot of yep. people got out, a lot of retirements. Absolutely. Now the Republicans face this in 2020. Uh, on the Senate side, they're going to be on the defense. Yeah. Exactly. So it's going to flip. I mean, the Democrats have a very good chance of taking the Senate in 2020. Yeah. And as I was saying, I mean, a lot of it will depend on, on Trump. Let's not kid ourselves. And <laughs> a lot of the energy on the True. D side is due to Trump. Correct. So, you know, and, and Trump can change the planet in a day with a single tweet. So <laughs> trying to predict 2020 is, is a long shot right now. But I agree. I think this, the Republicans will be on the defense I, on the Senate. I, I do think that it's not a foregone conclusion because politics is one of those things is that we can, we can speculate out. However, it depends on who that nominee is. For example, let's say if Hillary Clinton were the nominee, I don't think you'd maybe see as strong of a, a, of a return. But let's say it is a Joe Biden or let's say Bernie Sanders. I think that has implications. So it'll be interesting okay. to see. I think it'll be a much crowded prim uh, primary in the presidential. Let's talk Arizona. We've got this crazy Senate race, um, one of the closest we may see in a long, long time. Yeah. Um, the numbers are in flux. They're going to change. Um, it's neck and neck separated by not that much. I mean, we're, we're under a percentage point. Chad, it strikes me that Kirsten Sinema, because she was leading narrowly uh, on election night in Maricopa County and has extended the lead in Maricopa County, if she's going to win Maricopa County, it's over, right? She's going to win the election. Uh, I don't want to say it's over, but it looks pretty good. Uh, if, if the trend continues in Maricopa County and the Pima numbers come in like we expect them to, I think McSally has a very, very tough hill to climb here. Uh, I don't see how the math adds up as long as Maricopa holds for cinema. I think she will be the next U.S. Senator. You have modeled this, right, Mike? Yeah, correct. So when we looked at the modeling, is if, if the, the breaks stay what they're currently seeing, uh, cinema will win by about 21,000 votes. However, uh, for McSally to win, these remaining ballots that are left on the table, roughly what, uh, 400 and so thousand, they need a break by a 4.6 percent uh, advantage for uh, McSally. So. so with each drop, she has to win it by four percent, four plus 4 .6. percentage points. Correct. Okay, and, that, and, and by that, she'd win by 83 votes. By yeah. 83 <laughs> votes. Okay, yeah. now now help me out here. If a drop comes in and she drops below that four percent it becomes harder and harder and harder. Let's right? just say I think it, it, it becomes a, uh, a steeper hill to climb. So I think the pendulum has swung the other way as of right now in the election. Let's say she loses, okay? I don't see Martha McSally or Cinema, either one loses, being off the stage. We've got a <laughs> Senate seat yeah. up for grabs here. Yeah. Correct. Shortly. Yeah. 2020. Do you see them, both of them, one or the other, being up up for that seat. Oh, I'd say absolutely. And that's going to be interesting, too, to see where the uh, governor lands up picking for uh, a replacement, most likely, will happen at the beginning of the year, uh, who to fill that uh, Senate seat uh, once John Kyle most likely and, vacates. And, and if, I, I, would say, okay. I was just going to say, you know, depending on what happens but and who the governor picks, to your point, but if, if Kirsten were to lose, which, again, I, I don't think she's going to at this point, but if she were to lose, uh, I would say she would be the presumptive frontrunner from the Dem side already. Sure. To chase that 20 Okay, season. if the governor were to pick Martha McSally, how does that play out in election land? She'd been defeated against cinema. Is she damaged goods at that point? Uh, I, think, I think because of the race uh, being so close, I think uh, it would probably want to be as bad as normal just for the fact that I think they both ran 
uh, fantastic campaigns. I think they're both great candidates. So I agree. I, I agree with that. Yeah. So I think it'd be less, a uh, little less heat on it, just because I think they both did a fantastic job. Chad, I got to ask you because you served with Kirsten Cinema in the legislature. You know her well. Yeah. This conversion that happened over many years. <laughs> I mean, she was as far to the left as you can go early on. She yeah. was a Green Party yeah, person she was. early on. Do you believe this is a genuine conversion that's happened? That she's had a real change of heart about her political thoughts about the world? Yeah, I mean, without a doubt. So when you talk about her Green Party days and some of the other stuff we've seen and some of the ads. This is like indiscretions Sally's of youth? Yeah, it is. I mean, you're talking no about kidding. somebody who was in her 20s. This is the early 2000s we're talking about. And when she first got elected to the legislature, I think it would have been 2004, uh, she was what you would probably call the, the you know, traditional left-leaning liberal at that point, so to speak. But you saw her evolve fairly quickly because she learned something that a lot of people don't learn, and this is why she's such a great elected official. She learned that you can't be an activist once you're elected. You actually have to govern, and that's what she did as a legislator. Which, she by the way, torqued off people on the left. It, it did. Oh, no, that's, she has her critics on the left, just as many probably as she does on the right, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. But she learned something that I think every person should learn and should evolve as once they get elected, is you need to govern. And that's something that, quite honestly, is missing these days from elected officials, which is why we have partisan gridlock. And I honestly think Cinema will be the best thing to happen to D.C. if she wins this okay, race. Okay, let's, let's talk about the reverse of that. She found the middle, which she is did. where Arizona kind of that's is. exactly right. Yep. Let's put the slate up on the governor's race. And this kind of explains why David Garcia... <laughs> got thumped. He's a super nice guy. I had him on the program. Really like him. He's a, he's a gentleman. He's a great family guy. And he's really dynamic in person. He's got a lot of yes. personality. He got thumped in this race. And, and the, the one thing I will say about David Garcia, he never changed who he was. He didn't tack to the middle. Now, it may be a legitimate conversion with Kirsten Cinema. With Garcia, he said, this is what I believe in, and I'm running here. And Bernie comes to town. Yeah. I'm going to put my arm around him. I love the guy. Yeah. But it, it doesn't work in Arizona but, right but, now. Like, connecting with voters is not about selling yourself out or, or compromising on your values. It's about talking about the issues that are important to them in a way that relates to your own personal value set. And, and David Garcia, had he stuck to education and focused on that 24-7, would have been much more competitive than those numbers we just saw. Mike, had I, that I, think had... That's, I think that's a, a, a noble effort. However, I think uh, maybe... Uh, Garcia and Jeff Flake can maybe uh, grab a bite to eat afterwards because both of them right now, uh, you see that... Uh, They're in no think, man's land. Uh, correct. Uh, Jeff Flake's a man without a party. You saw Garcia you know, sticking to his beliefs. However, when it comes to winning the election, you can see that that definitely wasn't the right move. So I just think that there's just not much room for that right now in politics, unfortunately. we got to take a quick break on Newsmaker Saturday. When we come back, um, yes, <laughs> up until now, the, the slate election night looked like Statewide, Republicans were running the table. That may change. Is Arizona turning purple? Is it happening? We're back in a minute on Newsmaker Saturday. Back on Newsmaker Saturday. Is Arizona finally, after all this discussion about it, starting to turn blue? Is it turning purple now? We're talking about this in election night with, on the right of your screen, Chad Cam uh, Campbell, who was a former State House Minority Leader and Mike Noble of OH Predictive Insights, the pollster who really um, has had a pretty good track record in this cycle. You got it pretty close to the margin. You had McSally by one and... and yeah. Correct. When you have 2.3 million people voting, and that's what we said in our last release, it's, it, it's going to come down to good old-fashioned turnout, even though $100 million, historic number for Arizona being spent. And there's just certain things, I don't care how good you are, you, no one can get it that close. As a pollster, <laughs> if you get it within the margin of error, do you feel pretty good about that? Oh, absolutely. Whether you're on the right side or the wrong. Absolutely. You know. Yeah, we can't control uh, under the ground. 2.3 million voters. And again, this will probably be decided by, you know, 20, 30,000 votes or so. I mean, that's that's pretty historic. But no, feel great. Uh, and it was an excellent contest. And we've been tracking it. And we also don't have uh, any clients or a dog in the fight. So we've been yeah. purely spectating. Chad, is it turning? Is it is there a shift happening? Yeah, I think there is. A um, lasting shift. Not a I Janet so. Napolitano wins, Terry Goddard <laughs> wins exactly. shift. No, I think it is. And, and if you look at putting the Senate race aside for a minute, uh, it looks like superintendent is going to be a Democrat. That's the first state-level, statewide elected officer we've had in a while. A complete newcomer to the yeah. scene. Uh, the Secretary of State's race is still close. We don't know where that's going to fall. 
But also, the Dems picked up four seats in the House, which, which I predicted, by the way. I want to point that out. <laughs> uh, one of the few people in the state to say that. I'm be out and of that's job. the closest it's been since the 60s. It's only a two seat split right. now in the House. Yeah, this uh, used to be a Democrat state. Yeah, right did. before Barry Decades Goldwater came exactly on the scene, right, it, right? you know. So I think was... we're trending back to that. And the thing I tell people from outside Arizona, I always tell my friends is, we're not really a conservative state. We're an independent state. We're, we're a libertarian, libertarian state, state yeah, in a exactly. way. Yeah, I agree with and that. And I think that people are going back to those kind of roots. And we saw, at least I saw this, independence kind of breaking more to Democrats this time than we've seen. And I know that's You're partially due to the national climate. You saw that. But oh, yeah, things we are saw shifting. It all year. Yeah, yep. All year. All now, year you, seen you've, you're looking at the map of what's changing. Talk mm -hmm. about just a few suburbs, just quickly, oh, that are starting to shift. I, I think it's very uh, stark when you look at uh, the maps between uh, D.C.'s performance compared to McSally, is that you look in Ahwatukee, you look in South Tempe, you look in uh, Chandler, uh, West Gilbert, parts of Mesa, Deer Valley, Anthem, and then Northwest Peoria. Those are all suburban-type areas. And again, those are some of the key swing voters we we're looking okay, at. Okay, and now what's happening in those areas? And I have a theory. Well, I think that, that migration from California is starting to change Arizona politics a bit. Well, I mean, who can blame people wanting to flee California exactly. and come to beautiful Arizona? <laughs> but are the people fleeing conservatives upset with tax over taxes over regulation they're fed up with the politics of california and they're like i got to get somewhere else i think it's part it's, i think it's a mixed bag frankly from that side and uh, arizona though we, we get people from all across the country frank i'm from Mo uh, milwaukee wisconsin personally right. so and you look at that that yeah arizona is absolutely changing but I, I definitely agree with chad though i think we're definitely that independent i mean uh, maverick uh, home of barry goldwater jr i mean that is that is our roots and uh, that means uh, it's cinema's approach was probably the right one to spot try on. to target the independents. And you looked at her message, the entire campaign. She did not talk about party politics. Not at she all. talked about Arizona. She talked about doing what was right for the state and for the country, being independent. That was the right approach. You, and it's the approach Napolitano used many years ago, too. That's exactly right. Do you yep. and, and, and Bruce Babbitt, Bruce, and you yep, could go exactly. down the line, Dennis DeConcini, yep. he was a moderate Democrat. Is that the path forward to success in Arizona, do you uh, believe? For the short term, yes. I, I do think demographics will change over time. I do think Arizona will become more of a left-leaning state over the next decade or so. But that's down the road. I think you still have to be a pragmatic person when you're approaching statewide office here from either side of the aisle. I, I, I think, you know, Democrats definitely had a couple of wins. However, Arizona is still solidly red. And so I think we saw, it was interesting with all the talks of the blue wave, I think we saw more of a blue ripple here in Arizona. But again, uh, no two elections are the same. And that's why with this increased turnout, midterms uh, may end up becoming far more uh, uh, interesting, but yes. also more of a fight because before midterm election, pretty much you already got an R next to your name, you're most likely going to win, especially on the statewide level. How was the polling on this? Uh, the polling, you know what's funny? Overall. This year, well, this year in general, uh, pollsters did a fantastic job. Why? What to, changed? Well, what changed is that I think it, it, this, uh, there's two things. One is Pollsters really went back and looked at, you know, what are the, the vehicles they're using and also their modeling, how they're gathering their sample. But the other thing is I think the media has done a much better job of not just, uh, you know, actually vetting the polls. Because I think we saw a lot of polls last time that were getting uh, uh, coverage that, frankly, had zero track record, no background, no methodology. But yet they were, they were going into these models. And, it, again, if you're... Oh, it was skewing the model oh, with absolutely. bad data. Yeah, and they, if you look at the aggregate. I don't think is very uh, happy about 2016. And that's why they, have too, on their end, making sure their modeling is a lot better because you know, models are only good as, as the information right. they have out there. Chad, um, in Arizona now, the, as you said, the House, the Senate, starting to narrow a little yeah. bit. You really believe that we're, we're in the midst of a, a shift here? I think so. Uh, I think a lot will depend on, on the population growth over the next few years. But I think seeing the trends we're seeing, we're becoming a younger state, which a lot of people don't think about when they think about Arizona. Think about retirees and, and the older population. They vote, tend to vote Democratic. Democratic, yeah, exactly. And I think that trend is going to continue. Uh, and a lot of this, quite frankly, will depend on how redistricting goes, though, after 2020, how, the congressional, yeah, how the congressional maps are drawn, how the legislative maps are drawn. Now, that, doesn't, that's be a big that doesn't rely on politics because well, we have an everything independent... Everything relies on politics. That's true. <laughs> but we have an independent <laughs> yeah. commission that does uh, it. We're not it, as it, 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 caught yeah. up in that as other no, states. No, we're much better than other states. We do have an independent group of people that are separate from the legislature. Not perfect. We've got, we've got <laughs> 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. 20 perfect, seconds. But it's better. Who wins the Senate race? Uh, cinema. Senate race? 
cinema. Say it. Say it. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. Again, I'm going to catch a lot of flack. All that. right. Is there? Uh... <laughs> okay, we got to wrap it there. Sal, I really do. Chad Campbell, <laughs> Mike Noble, thank you as always <laughs> for uh, for spending a little time with me on uh, Newsmaker uh -huh. Saturday. We appreciate we appreciate your time, and we'll see you next week on Newsmaker Saturday.